hey everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel this is yolanda's digital diary and of course i am yolanda Yang. thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much to the subscribers the 20 subscribers i see y'all i appreciate y'all i love y'all and i hope god blesses you guys in multiplication um yeah i'm sorry like this video has taken forever to upload i actually recorded something in early january and um that footage was just really corrupt so yeah i've had to also kind of deal with life's hurdles i've moved out so probably you guys can see that this is not the same um backdrop um i live in a new place now still in johannesburg of course and uh yeah guys man a lot of things have happened a lot of things have actually happened over the past couple of weeks you know from coming from december to just trying to figure out how to go by you know this year kind of doing that whole eat love pray shandes a person didn't consume alcohol for 12 days straight so listen i give myself a big woo sham let me tell you because yeah alcohol um is my friend and having to kind of have this um separation for a couple of days was really 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 hard although very very beneficial for my health both mentally physically just on all levels um and also jay on the bank account a person can't afford like i can't afford and i don't have a blesser so what must happen um but you know it is one of those things i um moved out i didn't go home i didn't go home this past december i did see my brother though so my brother bengena isu twini aka mountain school um in december so he went through that whole circumcision initiation process and um i was really worried i must say that like you know he would come back um from those few weeks that he spent there as come back as a different person but thank god i haven't noticed any symptoms i mean i don't <laughs> I don't live with my brother he's 18 i don't live with him um but you know he we, we he's he's been raised in a very matriarchal family all women and um you know it was kind of that worry worrying um voice worrying feeling in my and like you know at the back of my head of oh my god when this guy comes back from the initiation school i hope he doesn't like become worse i hope he doesn't now come in to form his his newfound masculinity whatever that is you know and it's just all of these things and for me really a i'm really glad he is circumcised because yeah yeah to his future partners like if anything that we can we can actually say is a plus to be a closer is the mandatory circumcision process that every boy must go through so i'm really glad about that um so obviously health reasons of course um and sexual but yay I shouldn't actually be talking about this because this really is my brother but you know so that that happened i was really stressed throughout december um you know having having not spoken to him and, and like really kind of found out how he was feeling about going going to you know esutini to mountain school to this you know going through this whole process particularly because you know he is a, a suburban modern child uh, born and raised in you know Gauteng, and you know we have literally no ties with the eastern cape apart from the fact that our ancestors are from there and obviously but you know how it goes and being a modern woman that i am you know i was trying to have this conversation with the family the parentals to just find out is this really something that you know he should be going through right now does he want to have y'all spoken to him and found out how he feels you know considering you know the reported death deaths that um you know have occurred over the past couple of decades um throughout this process but again guys it could just be if we're being honest it really could just be uh, a white monopoly uh, coming for black people again and trying to strip us of you know our cultural practices that have existed long before we can even say you know we remember so it's all of these tensions with you know balancing your 
balancing one's modern feminist uh, feminist outlook uh, and politic um, in society and, and balancing that with also being a black woman being a, a black Hossa woman in South Africa and um, what that really means because I can't necessarily also strip myself of my heritage and my culture because that really does make me who I am so yeah I, I, I that's my two cents really on this whole thing and also as a woman as a feminist I just feel like if I were to have a boy child for me personally I definitely would would uh, um, I would definitely would suggest to my um, to my son to have uh, or to go through circumcision but again it's you know bodily autonomy it's your choice and my brother is pretty chilled about the whole thing he was like yo man I even know what's gonna happen on the first day when I enter you know he knew what to expect and yeah he was really confident so I'm just glad he's back he's safe he's healthy and he's back at school so that's all that matters man um, but on that note moving right along um, Another thing that has happened in my life over the past couple of weeks Yeah, apart from the moving is really just trying to figure out how a person is gonna go by 2020 You know most of you guys know that I do have an NPO newly established but growing NPO called Amabaliwe 2 or the archive Amabaliwe 2 in full and um, You know, I'm I'm trying to build a digital organization. I'm trying to build a platform sort of a resource center where we could share all of our experiences arising from gender-based violence and just broader social injustice where we can use the power of storytelling to kind of influence whatever social behavior that needs to change that is violent that is very narrow-minded that is toxic that is that is that is not okay that does not need to even be given you know the time of day really um, particularly if it does affect you know the next person the people around you and the spaces that you occupy so um that 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 is the kind of mission that i'm on trying to harness you know the political voice again but on the digital space trying to mobilize um african feminists um towards speaking up and sharing our stories and sharing all the good work that we're doing and sharing also our personal experiences and how we've navigated um you know throughout this this patriarchal very misogynistic very anti-black and very anti-black women um uh, you know as a system and, and 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 current climate that we find ourselves in globally um, So a person is still kind of finishing off in a documentary that I, I did a kind of allude to on my social media platforms and Apart from that a person is still hustling guys. I'm unemployed. I'm still wearing the same earrings like we are born and she would see good bad like, good bad so I'm hoping that things do take a, a, a sort of a huge spin, a, a sort of like a, a, a huge turn any moment from now. Like, sledding jet guys, Good times we have a president, we have a government that is for the people, but damn, man, I don't feel like my government is for me, if I'm being honest. And, um, and I think one of the hardest things I've had to maneuver is the fact that, you know, for the past, I think this is the third year. Um, damn, I actually would have been probably doing masters had I graduated and decided to also further my studies in the academic space. I probably would have been doing my last year of masters now. Um, but, you know, having to maneuver the fact that I have no qualifications, I literally only have... <sighs> a matric certificate and these men outside are making so much noise because this flat that I just moved into is still being finished off touch-ups and all of that so wow I'm seeing that guys um, but you know what I was saying is that having to maneuver in a very capitalist society um, that you know demands for people to have some sort of skill that is you know documented that is on paper that has been conferred to you by you know a white institution for you to be I guess viable and employable um, in 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 the country it's tough no one wants me like <laughs> nobody wants me um so it's kind of like day day but if we're being honest it's really not cheap it's really hard um and yeah so speaking about my case on for on the 4th of december i did attend my court hearing i did make a court appearance your girl was out here 
Now, I did make a court appearance in Grahamstown at the Grahamstown High Court on the 4th of December, accompanied by my legal representation, um, the Socioeconomic Rights Institute of South Africa. So they've been representing me since 2016 upon, you know, the very moment Rose decided to gun me down and come for me. Um, um, and this was obviously as a result of my participation in the RU reference list protests that took the nation by the storm. And you know, I think for me, for the rest of my days, I'm always going to to constantly bring up that that political moment, that those 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 that movement that that shut down. Um, you know, it was it was really a very historical moment for me to be a part of um, a very historical moment actually in the country where young black women um, and young black queer individuals, you know, rose up against a very silencing um, and very uh, a pervasive system, you know, that forced us to kind of live with our our scars and essentially told us we don't care about you they we don't care we don't we don't we don't have any space for people who say they've been they've been uh, violated sexually or physically or anything we can try here and there but otherwise you know we keep it moving we we were dissenting against a system that did not center the voices of survivors of voices of the victims of you know uh, the broader rape culture in general and so um yeah i appeared in court on the 4th of december and really um my case is Yankee versus Rhodes so I am you know in the process and still waiting for a judgment the the judge did decide to withhold um he did decide to withhold the judgment and said that he would take a couple of weeks to just uh chew on a, on a few matters um and to apply his mind you know before handing out a judgment which you know really what we're seeking for here is for me to be able to give my side of the story for me to lead my evidence um, and for me to essentially have a voice and, and, and for me to be judged fairly you know or, or to be crucified uh, fairly if it is so be it but till date you know I was crucified I had not been given a chance to kind of air my side of the story how I got involved in the protest why I got involved in the protest and um, you know how um, you know, then that involvement kind of transpired. There's a lot of things that have been said about me in media that I was report that was reported about me at the time when I was excluded. Me being a vigilante, me being a kidnapper, me being a, 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 basically an assassinator. The only thing I just needed to do was to kill those those um, alleged rapists. But yeah, as Kolapo. Um, so you know there's a lot of things that have been said about me negatively in the media and it was really hard kind of maneuver um maneuver in, in, in society and time and space um amongst people when you know the first thing that's constantly ringing in my mind is oh my god if i introduce myself as this person you know people are going to look at me as like some criminal or some um you know a, a person who who doesn't even think um, and it's just like some violent person um, and, and, and acts on irrational emotions. So, which is, you know, obviously the, 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 the narrative that Rhodes was kind of, and still is really, um, you know, pushing in the, in the courts of law. But apart from that, man, it's been a long, a long, 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 um, past couple of weeks i really am glad that i've moved um and yeah man a person just keeps pushing a person keeps hustling a person keeps applying um and looking for opportunities to kind of just obviously grow um to self-fulfill and um but to also you know still do the good lord's work man like we gotta be out here guys we gotta be out here making our voices heard and cementing ourselves in spaces you know as was was mean tunes a said so um we gotta take up space and so i've always been taking up space like i've always been taking up space so i, I that's my mandate to continue rising above to continue um continue making myself heard really and learning from people as well i think is one of the things that i really 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 center the most for me i really appreciate um conversations and 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 um 
learning that comes from you know the sharing of experiences and the sharing of you know tools as to how people can better themselves and you know and, and this just relates to to job wise it relates to personal well-being um it just relates to the holistic self how do we um grow as individuals how do we use the passions that we feel so strongly about to make a difference a positive change you know i don't want to be a corrupt black woman i do not want to be reporting to a white man or a black man i definitely want to be working with the black women and queer um and the queer community and just you know people who are generally not men the only thing i do want from men though it is um yeah the sex that's that's the only thing me i want and maybe some cuddles okay and love but listen it's really hard being a cis hit um a cis heterosexual woman really is tense navigating you know being an angry black feminist because i'm definitely angry and i'm not going to denounce um that that kind of uh uh king whatever tagline or or characteristic of feminism i am angry i am an angry black radical feminist and i think um i should be proud to own that um i think we often look down on the emotions of anger um and you know there's obviously negative connotations towards feeling angry and being angry but um without anger guys nothing moves do you think that your boss is going to pay you the money that they owe you by you laughing and giggling with them and busy saying yes 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 ma'am yes no you gotta be angry you gotta you gotta show them you mean business and so you know that's my, my that's my tag of feminism <laughs> But yeah, guys, on a more serious note, you know, I feel like for me, you know, um, feminism really has saved me. My anger really, um, you know, it being the fuel um, uh, driving, you know, I guess my feminism has saved me. I have made things happen, made things move. Um, and, you know, I, I think a, a lot of times people are not going to give credit where it's due, or a lot of times people are going to look down on you for you know kind of exerting that kind that emotion when in actual fact that emotion was very necessary and very needed at that time for us to accomplish what you know we 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 we, we set to accomplish. So I think um, apart from that, really, man, it's just maneuvering 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 and yeah you know says i'm a guys like i'm so bad it's friday the 7th of feb a person is just not feeling the vibe it's not like i can afford to but yeah man guys i really I'm trying to keep this one very short because there really wasn't a lot of content um this time around but i do promise that in my third video i really do want to kind of get a um a, a give you guys a more better sense of who i am um a lot of people have said to me that as as much as i i am kind of like very open and i like to share the things i go through there's still a lot of things as well that i do hold back on um and often some of the things that i have spoken about uh, not everyone has um encountered or heard or read um so you know i'm a bali wanna a call now i pin the foot and i i i i i was no my baby scares um but uh yeah i hope you guys are really um taking it easy i hope you guys have a lovely valentine's with your loved ones and um, particularly those who can afford tina ban you give it to just like any other day really um um i'm neither here or there about valentine's day if i'm being honest because really i've never celebrated it apart from you know days in school high school primary school preschool but really that significance of um actively 
actively um um doing something for the person that you are um in love with or are romantically involved with um on that specific day as you know the, the rest of the world does i think you know there's something cute about that but as i and day day experience i'm not i don't know it um maybe i will know it maybe i won't um but yeah i i, I hope that all of you guys are having a really good um start of the month and that i hope it continues on that note and listen ring a girl up if you guys know anybody who's looking for anybody i'm here i will transform myself into whatever that person needs me to be and i will get the job done so apart from that please 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 share this video with your friends share my channel with your friends subscribe to my channel like comment um and yeah man let's 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 build yolanda's digital diary slowly but surely laying the foundations as i said give you guys content you know taking pictures of i don't pictures of food of restaurants that's not me yet <laughs> but um yeah man in jalo you know it is it is it, it, it's that thing and um from me to you guys um bye